All right, welcome back. We've been talking about coordinate systems, and this is the last coordinate system that we're going to look at. This is spherical coordinates. So um, we're going to cover this not in quite as much detail as we did cylindrical coordinates. The idea is that, uh, you know, I just wanted to show you how some of these things are derived, and so I did that for cylindrical coordinates. And so now that you kind of get a flavor for that, we're going to kind of bypass some of the details and uh, just apply spherical coordinates. So here we go. All right, well, here's my X, Y, Z drawing again, and I draw these ahead of time because it, it takes me forever to draw these. Uh, so I've got a point here, and uh, of course I can represent it by three numbers in Cartesian, X, Y, and Z. I can represent it by three numbers in cylindrical, um, rho, phi, and Z. And there's a, th a third common way of representing this point, and that's with these three numbers I've got in green. So just draw your attention to green here for a second. Um, I can tell you how, how far away it is from the origin, and that's this, uh, this number r, okay? How far away it is from the origin, so that's r. And then um, I can tell you the angle it makes in the xy plane, like if it was projected down, you know, projected down here. The angle it makes on the xy plane, um, that's this azimuthal angle uh, phi again. I guess um, that's usually the third component, so we'll just write it there. And then the, the other component then is what angle it makes with the z-axis. And uh, this is the colatitude angle, and we represent the colatitude angle as theta. Okay, so I've got a distance um, r, and then I've got two angles, and then um, from those three numbers then I can locate my point, and that's the idea with spherical coordinates. All right, now let's talk about the range of these three numbers. Um, so r is this distance from the origin, so um, r can be any number between 0 and infinity, including 0. Um, if it was 0, then we would be at the origin. And theta, theta we're going to say goes from 0 to only pi. So you need to be aware of this. It only goes to pi, which means, you know, if you're looking at the drawing, and theta is the angle measured from the z-axis, it comes down and it stops at the negative z-axis. It does not go fully around. And why is that? Well, the next angle is this azimuthal angle. It goes from 0 to 2 pi. And so because it goes from 0 to 2 pi, actually we're going to, um, we, can, we can get all of those negative points over here uh, with with uh, with phi, we can rotate phi around, and so we don't need to double count these these points. And so th there's there's really no need for um, both angles to go zero to two pi. Just one angle needs to go um, zero to two pi, and that's usually by default this phi angle. Um, and then I'll just just point out a subtlety here: theta actually can c include pi, and that if it, if theta was pi, then it, it would be on the point that is would be on the negative z axis. So here's the range for those three coordinates. Okay, now once again, then I'll draw your attention to our basis vectors, and the basis vectors are drawn in blue on my figure. Now, um, you have to kind of use your imagination a little bit, but uh, basis vector AR, that points in the direction of R, so if I extended this line, this green line R out, it would be in the direction of AR. Now tangent, or um, I guess perpendicular to AR is this um, A phi, which we talked about before, how it makes this uh, this tangent to the arc, but um, it's perpendicular to AR, and also perpendicular and tangent to this uh, this fragmented sphere is this A uh, a theta. So that's in the direction of changing theta, right? So theta is changing this way and a theta goes this way. And so what again what we have here are three basis vectors that are all orthogonal to one another. They're all perpendicular. And 
they're defined such that they all have unit length. So again, we have a basis set that are orthonormal. The vectors, that is, are orthonormal. They, they have unit length and they're all mutually perpendicular. Okay, so again, AR is in the direction of a positive change in R, right? So if we, we change R by a little bit, we, we're going in the direction of AR. A theta is in the direction of positive change in theta, right? So if we change theta a little bit, we're going in this direction, A theta. And of course, a phi, a phi is in the direction of positive change of phi. So we can express the numbers at a point like this, and we can express vectors then uh, in their component form. So, um, you know, vector A in spherical coordinates might be represented like this, a r, so that's the component in the r direction, how far away it is from the origin, the component in the theta direction, and the component in the phi azimuthal direction. Or, um, as we've seen before, we can choose to write this like um, a r times the basis vector, so this is a linear combination of the basis vectors, a r times little a r, a theta times little a theta plus a phi times little a phi. So you'd have you, you should have a good idea of what this all means uh, at, by this point. Now, also uh, being that our basis set, uh, each vector that is is uh, has a unit magnitude or a unit length, then the length of our vector is just the square root of the components squared. So this is the Pythagorean theorem again. It still holds, it still holds in spherical coordinates. All right, so we just take the square root of the sum of the squares. And also, so th th this is important. I keep saying this all, you know, um, in in all three coordinates videos. So this is important. You got to keep your eyes out for this uh, moving forward through this class. Um, being that these are all orthogonal, that is the basis vectors are orthogonal to one another, if I take the dot product of one basis vector with the other basis vector, or with another basis vector, then I get zero. So any pair, as long as you know the two basis vectors are different, when I take the dot product of them I get zero. We've seen this many times now, or a couple times now, it doesn't have to be a r and a theta, it could be a r and a phi, right? It can be um, a theta and a phi, and it, we can exchange the order of those, and we still get zero. That's because they're perpendicular. And because they have unit length, when I take the dot product of one basis vector with itself, so like a r with itself, I get one. a theta would be similar, a phi would be similar as well. Now, let's talk about the right-handedness of this system. So uh, if, we, if we consult our original figure um, and the, the basis vectors in blue there, um, it's, it's not going to be entirely obvious by this figure being, being that it's three-dimensional. But this, this is a right-handed system just like the um, Cartesian coordinate system was and the cylindrical coordinate system was. So it turns out that if you point your fingers, and you should do this with me, um, along the R uh, axis, if you will, so along the direction of AR, and then you, if you curl your fingers of your right hand, that is, in the direction of A theta, your thumb points um, in the direction of A phi. Okay, so just to just to write that down, then in, in terms of the cross product, AR cross a theta is equal to a phi. Okay, again, point your, take your right hand, point your, I'm doing this right now, point your fingers uh, in the direction of AR, curl them towards a theta, and your thumb will have to point in the direction of a phi. And it's also true that, oh, that's bad A, hang on, let me erase that, <laughs> that a a theta cross a phi is equal to a r, okay, and a phi 
cross a r is equal to a theta. Okay, we have a right-handed system. All right, so feel free to pause the video if you like. I'm going to move on. I'm going to erase some of this. Keep the original figure, though. Now, let's talk about transforming a point uh, f from or to spherical coordinates and then uh, from or to uh, Cartesian and cylindrical. So first of all, let's, let's talk about, let, let's say you're given uh, x, y, z. So you're given the point in rectangular or Cartesian form, x, y, z. How do you get r from that? Well, you can use the Pythagorean theorem, and because r is the distance from the origin now, um, we can just say r is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared. Okay, so that will give us our first um, coordinate or our first um, you know number in the coordinates of in spherical coordinates. Now how would we get the colatitude angle theta? You might want to think about that. You might want to pause the video and think about it. But uh, basically what we can do is if you know if we project this thing down at this point that is into the xy plane you see that uh, we can get the, the length in the xy plane as the square root of x squared plus y squared. And so that's, then we, then we can apply the inverse tangent idea. So really what we're doing is we're taking the inverse tangent of the projected, you know, if we project this thing down onto this black solid line that I have, and then, so we have that length based on Pythagorean theorem, so that's kind of our y value if you like. but. Uh, then we divide it by z. That will give us theta. So I encourage you to um, really think about that. Uh, how you know the geometry? Think about this point in different views, like standing on the top of the z-axis and looking down, and so on. But uh, that's the way we would get the, the theta angle, and then the azimuthal angle. Um, this one is just the the old inverse tangent of y over x like we saw in cylindrical coordinates because that is in the xy plane already so we can just use you know the inverse tangent of y over x like we're used to so so now we have we have this idea that uh, if we're given x y and z in rectangular form then this is how we get uh, spherical the location in spherical same point though it's the same point it's just a different way of representing the point now let's talk about how you would go the other way, that is, given r, theta, and phi, you know, how do you get x, y, and z? All right, well, it's kind of it's kind of the, the reverse thought process. So the x-coordinate, uh, it, it's r sine theta cosine phi. So where does that come from? Well, we talked about projecting down to the x, y, uh, axis. So if you're given this point, if you're given this point, when you take, and it's got a length of r, and when you take um, sine, when you take r sine theta, that gives you kind of this this length here projected down into the xy plane, and then when you take the cosine of phi, right, that becomes the hypotenuse in the xy plane, and when you take the cosine of phi, that gives you the x coordinate, and if you take the sine of phi, that gives you the y coordinate. So y is our sine theta, then sine phi, like that. And then uh, how do you get z? Well, that's before projection, so that's just our cosine of theta. If taking our sine theta projected it into the xy plane, then taking our cosine theta gives you the z, uh, z dimension. So that's the way that we would go from spherical to um, uh, rectangular. All right, and so in, in keeping with just spherical and rectangular for a second, before we bring in cylindrical, um, we can talk about the basis vector. So this was how to uh, to transform a point. Now let's talk about vectors. And so here's where we're not going to show as much detail as we did with uh, cylindrical. So it turns out if you if you performed a similar analysis similar to what we did in s cylindrical coordinates, it turns out that you can you can work this out 
that AX is given by this thing here. And let me just write it down. So do you need to worry about memorizing that? Certainly not. Let, let your professors memorize this, okay? Uh, bookmark it. Um, put it in your notes, do something so that you can recall it, but you do not need to memorize it. And to be honest, you don't really need to understand it too much. You just need to be able to apply it. And so we can we can do a similar thing for a y, and we get this. Just let me write it down. Okay, a y, and then finally we can do the same thing for a z, and we get cosine of theta a r minus sine theta a theta, but no phi component. So, so given the basis vectors and given your 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 spherical system, this is how you get to um, rectangular. Okay, and uh, I'm not going to write it down, but there's a way. Then there's an inverse way, so we can we can um, solve this for a r and a theta and a phi instead of a x a y and a z. So there is an inverse to this as well. But what I do want to write down um, is this this thing in matrix form. Okay, so um, now if you're given a vector in spherical coordinates. So you have the components in spherical coordinates, and you want to get rectangular coordinates. One thing you can do is multiply by a matrix. So if, if I put all of this into a matrix, okay, so this would be, for example, this would be sine theta cosine phi, that element, and this would be cosine theta cosine phi, and this would be minus sine phi, and then I move on, so this is sine phi sine theta, oh excuse me, sine theta sine phi, I guess it doesn't matter, cosine of theta sine phi, cosine of phi, and then what we would have is just cosine of theta minus sine theta zero. So Remember that the basis vectors, they get multiplied by our components, right? So I'll put the components over here, multiplying them. So what we've just found out is how to transform the basis vectors. So now you can just you can transform your 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 uh, components very quickly using this mat one matrix calculation. Okay, take your components, put them in a little vector here, multiply by this matrix, and now you've got your components in the x, y, z system, that is the rectangular system. And also, I'm going to write this down, bear with me. Um, th this matrix here has an inverse, it turns out. So what we can do is we can find that inverse, and uh, I found it for you. Um, you don't again you don't need to memorize these things just know that they exist and be able to use them and so the inverse of this thing turns out um, and if you know linear algebra then you then you know this inverse or maybe maybe you know the inverse but the inverse looks like this cosine cosine theta there uh, cosine theta cosine phi, cosine theta sine phi, minus sine theta, and this is minus sine phi, cosine phi, and zero. And this is ax, ay, and az. So you know this. This you can find in a, in a book or in um, on the internet. But the idea is this: now, if you're if you're given the components, the vector components in rectangular form, ax, ay, az, you can just multiply by this guy, and then that gives you the vector components in spherical coordinates. 
Okay. So now I'm gonna erase that. I'm gonna erase my beautiful work there. And what, it, what it took me so long to write down. And we're gonna talk about um, going from moving from spherical coordinates to and from um, cylindrical coordinates. So if you remember in cylindrical coordinates, you you had three numbers: rho, uh, the azimuthal angle, phi, and then you had z. So now we want to know to and from uh, spherical coordinates where we have r, theta, rho. Okay, how are we going to do that? Well, it turns out you can you can um, perform a, a similar analysis. I guess we'll, we'll talk about points. How do you transform points first? So um, from the Pythagorean theorem, you can get r with rho squared plus z squared, square root. So why is that? Well, if we just said that r was x squared plus y squared plus z squared, right? And if you recall from cylindrical coordinates, x squared plus y squared is rho squared. So we make that substitution and we get rho squared there. So so given, um, given rho, phi, and z, you can get r this way. Okay, so how do we get the uh, collatitude angle theta? And that, if you recall, in um, what we said about rectangular coordinates, that was the square root of x squared plus y squared over z. So now in we, we recognize that x squared plus y squared is rho, and the square root there. So what we can do is uh, take the inverse tangent of rho over z. So again, given um, cylindrical coordinates, we take the inverse tangent of rho over z, and now we've got the collatitude angle theta. And um, phi and phi, well, that's easy enough. So phi doesn't change, right? They're, 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 uh, they're defined the same way, so, so that does not change. So, okay, so here is the way that you would go from... Uh, cylindrical to spherical. So then, the, so we can we can um, change that order around, and we can find that rho is r sine theta. We can see that z is r cosine theta, and again, phi is just phi. So this is the way that you would go from spherical, you know, given r, theta, and phi, you get rho, phi, and z. Okay, and then finally, I'm going to erase this. Again, feel free to pause the video. Uh, finally, for vectors, I guess, not not finally, fi finally part one, I guess. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, for transforming vectors, Okay, we can take what we just said about points and so forth and the basis vectors, and it turns out, and again, I'm not showing as much detail anymore. I'll, I'll let you work that out on a, on a Saturday night. You know, you want to take this to a party, go for it. Don't memorize this though. You know, tell your friends at your party. You don't need to memorize this. Just have it written down. So the idea is that if you're given a vector with components a rho, a phi, and a z in in cylindrical coordinate system, then you multiply by this matrix, and now you're you'll uh, get the components in the spherical uh, system. And this matrix has an inverse. So let me write that down. The inverse is sine theta, cosine, theta, 0, 0, 0, 1, cosine, theta, minus sine, theta, 0. And so the inverse is, of this is that when you multiply by this vector, which is in spherical coordinates, then you get the cylindrical coordinates. Neat party worthy stuff right there. All right. Now, lastly, lastly, 
let's talk about the distance between two points. So this is kind of, uh, you know, not, not limited to spherical coordinates. This is, we can do this in any system. The distance between two points. Okay, so it's, it's often the case actually that you want to find the distance between two points um, and we'll say that the points have position vectors. We talked about position vectors before. So let's say the two points have position vectors R1 and R2. Okay, so that, those are extending from the origin. So the distance actually, it's, it's, it's simple. The distance is the absolute value or the magnitude of the difference of those guys, right? Just like you would you would say in one dimension, if, if I walked five feet and you walked six feet, then the distance is one foot. But now in three dimensions, of course, you you know you take the difference like you would in one dimension, but now you take the um, you take the norm or you take the magnitude of that. And uh, and the distance then in the Pythagorean in uh, the Pythagorean theorem tells us the distance in the Cartesian system. Okay is the difference in the x-coordinates plus the difference in the y-coordinates squared, that is, plus the difference in the z-coordinates squared. All right, so that's the distance. That's Cartesian now. Cylindrical, cylindrical, well, re remember that in cylindrical, so I'll just make a note, Cartesian. In cylindrical, Recall that x was rho cosine phi and y was rho sine phi. And so with some trig identities, we can write the distance as, uh, it's, it's bad news when I, when I draw a long square root, right? But with some trig identities, we can write it as this guy here. Cosine Of the difference, and the z's stay the same, right? We like the z's. Uh, so this is the distance in cylindrical, and and I'm I'm um, making use of the fact that in cylindrical the transformation was that x is equal to rho cosine phi, and y is equal to rho sine phi. Okay, so I plug those into the x's, and then I massage it a little bit with some algebra and some trig, and that's what I get. And then uh, the distance in spherical coordinates. So if you were scared by that long square root before, you're really scared now. Um, so if we make the substitutions that we've already covered in this video with x and r, how x and r are related and so on, then uh, we can find the distance um, in spherical coordinates is this guy. Minus 2 r1 r2 cosine cosine minus 2 r1 r2 sine sine and then cosine of the difference. Oh, that's phi. Phi. Now this, you have to memorize. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. You don't memorize that either. You Again, you have this bookmarked. It might be in the cover of your book, um, you know, the, the front cover or whatever. But uh, you want to know it exists, and you want it on your sheet of notes. And uh, that's all we have to say regarding um, the transformation of cylindrical and uh, spherical and Cartesian coordinate systems. So there's there's one last video on these systems. It's not about transforming anything, but uh, what we're going to do is look at what's called constant uh, coefficient surfaces, or constant surfaces. Um, and so we'll, we'll need this in, in our electromagnetics study. So um, what are these uh, surfaces? Let's have a look.